Hello and welcome to news on the uh, on ACNN TV. First, the major stories. The Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion commences her 2024 annual Bishops and Wives Discipleship Retreat in Lagos. The Diocese of Uyeli Anglican Communion concludes her three days power packed prayer convocation with the theme Moving to My Place of Safety, taken from Revelation chapter 12, verse 14. Plus, the President Mothers Union Women's Guild and Girls Organization, Mrs. Angela Ndokuba, admonishes women to depend on God for divine peace and fulfillment as they journey through this year 2024. The news in details. The Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion has commenced her 2024 annual Bishops and Wives Discipleship Retreat at the Archbishop Adebola and Mrs. Oluranti Ademowo Christian Resource Center, Faith Plaza, Barriga, Lagos, in the Diocese of Lagos. Starting with a communion service led by the host diocese, the retreat is being presided by the Archbishop Metropolitan and Primate of All Nigeria, His Grace, the Most Reverend Dr. Henry Ndokuba, and Mama Nigeria, Mrs. Angela Ndokuba. Also in attendance are the Lagos State Governor, His Excellency Governor Baba Jide Sawolu, all archbishops, bishops, and their wives, among others. Having the team for the one-week retreat as shepherding God's family, the primate, His Grace, the Most Reverend Dr. Henry Ndokoba, said the retreat is aimed towards seeking God's face for the work ahead in the year 2024. In his remark, the Lagos State Governor, Mr. Babajide Saolu, who is also a member of the Diocese of Lagos, welcomed the primate, his wife, archbishops, bishops and their wives to Lagos, wishing them a fulfilled stay throughout the retreat, as he urged all participants to continue to pray for the Church of God and the nation at large. The Diocese of Ueli Anglican Communion, under the leadership of His Grace, the Most Reverend Dr. Cyril Odutemo, has concluded her three days power packed prayer convocation with a call on religious leaders to always preach peaceful coexistence. Followers were also urged to keep praying for Nigerian leaders to deliver on the good governance on the mandates the people entrusted them with. Delta State ACNN News correspondent Austin Azu tells us more. The annual three days power packed prayer convocation of the Diocese of Ugele, Anglican Communion, Benden Ecclesiastical Province, held at the AGGS School Field, Ugele, Delta State, is a program for the Diocese to begin every new year. This year's theme, Moving into My Place of Safety, featured salvation messages, healing, deliverance, breaking of courses, song administration, supernatural anointing, and lots more. Wherever you are, the power of the Most High shall come upon you. His hand will do His purpose upon your life. Through this program, you will see the mighty works of God. The governor of Delta State, represented by his deputy, Samonde Yemen, who lauded the diocese for its consistency organizing the program over the years, promised to partner the diocese towards promoting God's work. The governor, however, called for support to enable him achieve his political manifesto. I thank you for this prayer convocation because our more agenda was carefully designed for the overall advancement of our state and humanity. We shall grow together in Jesus' name. This year will be a greater year for all Deltans. I want the church to continue to pray for the government and our state. Preach peaceful coexistence. Encourage your members to engage in positive actions that will always, as a people of God, let the people know that God is using all of us in government to provide solutions to our collective challenges. 
The host bishop and archbishop of Benden, Ekpajasko province, who said the theme of this year's prayer convocation is very timely in a time like this, where no place in Nigeria can be said to be safe. The Archbishop further urged Christians not to relent praying for Nigeria's leaders, especially in decision-taking. Pray for them. In their tenor, may the state be peaceful. In their tenor, may there be resources. The Lord said to Samuel, anoint. We now take the oil of his presence. Oh, and we anoint you today and the government of this state. Oh, as the blessed feet of the Lord, Samon de Onyeme, Elder Cherif Oborewori, may your government prosper. Amen. The guest preacher and bishop, Darcy of Ajayi Crowder, Right Reverend Collis Babalola, who centered his messages on the theme, asked believers to serve God genuinely and await his safety upon their lives and families. Highlight of this year's prayer convocation was marching around the arena several times, like the Israelites ran the walls of Jericho. In Ugele for ACN News, I'm Austin Azu. The President Mothers Union Women's Guild and Girls Organization, Mrs. Angela Ndokuba, has encouraged all women to depend on God for divine peace and fulfillment as they journey through this year, saying with God on their side, there will be peace. Mrs. Angela Ndokuba made this known in an interview with ACN News correspondent Caroline Achumbe, adding that with the peace of God, every storm of life will be quenched. This is our year of divine peace. And I want to encourage our women that this year we should depend on God. God that has promised that He will grant us divine peace and fulfillment this year, we surely do it. He has not told us that there will not be afflictions. He has not told us that there will not be hardship. But in all of them, He will grant us peace. That peace that quenches the storm will be our portion. We remember when Jesus was asleep in the boat. When the storm was there, the disciples woke him up. He rebuked the storm and said, peace be still. God is assuring us this year that we should be at peace with him. And he will calm whatever storm that we come our way as women in this country and in this church in Jesus name. The Bishop of the Anglican Diocese of Lagos Mainland, His Lordship the Right Reverend Akimpelu Johnson, has said that power supply and corruption are the major issues affecting the economy of the country. He called on those in the position of power to encourage people to invest in power. The cleric also called on Nigerians to fight corruption. Bishop Johnson made this statement in an interview in Lagos. The economy of the nation is something that um, is very important to settling a lot of matters. Even Let's not even talk about the killing. Let's talk about area boys. If they were well engaged, fully engaged, why should we fear? Why should I be afraid that my car will break down on the third mainland bridge? And rather than come and assist me, I will have people who will want to rob me. And that's because the economy of the country has gone down. And unfortunately, the economy of the country cannot be better until we have sorted out a major issue, component, which is power supply. Without power supply, companies will just keep on relocating out of Nigeria. The cost of doing business in Nigeria is terrible. And of course, corruption. I was in a gathering one day and we were talking about it. And I noticed that um, one of the speakers refused to use the word corruption. And he kept on using the word capacity, capacity. I said, but why are we afraid to use the word corruption? Corruption has eaten deep into the fabric of the nation. Not only our leaders, but even us at the grassroots. We all expect something for something. You know, so I don't think it was like this before. I grew up in, in Nigeria that we were free to move around. The night of the 31st, people were out. Christmas Eve, we started service at 11 o'clock. You can't do that nowadays because of the fear. Those at the helm of affairs should encourage, even as our president goes about encouraging investment. When these investments are supposed to be coming in, I don't know whether it is true or not. Why are those in authority now 
seeking compensation for themselves. And I look at it from the point of view of Joshua when he says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. It's a misapplication of that term or that phrase by Joshua. Because some people have this idea that once they themselves and their families are okay, or everything is okay. They can't be okay because they will live in fear. If you are surrounded by poverty, then you must live in fear if you have so much wealth. And that's one of the reasons why there's kidnapping. Still to come. Can stage a peaceful protest against platoon killings. The story and orders will come your way after this short break. Don't go away. Church of Nigeria, Anglican Communion, Diocese of Niger Delta North presents 2024 Port Harcourt Citywide Mega Crusade. Theme, Weep No More. Luke 7 verse 13, featuring salvation, healing, deliverance, soul lifting music and more. Ministering the word, Reverend Dr. Umau Bai, Right Reverend Dr. Paul A. Udogu, Venerable Dr. Moses Omeke, and Right Reverend Wisdom Butui Umwa, DSSRS, JP, Lord Bishop, Diocese of Niger Delta North, Chief Ho, Date is Monday 15th to Sunday 21st of January 2024. Time 4.30 p.m. daily. Venue St. Paul's Cathedral, Diopu Potakot by Garrison Junction. Ministering in music, Trauma Jesus, Joe Praise, Evangelist Nehemiah Chinedu and the Dell Session Band and Choir. Watch live via ACNN TV or via Facebook at www.dndnanglican.org.ng. All DNDN churches are viewing centers. Venerable Dr. Ifai Aniaboso, Chairman Planning Committee. Jesus wipes away tears. Jesus is Lord. There are standards in life. Mm -hmm. But the beauty of it is that we have the highest standard. Lord, we decree Radio upon this nation. We decree peace upon Nigeria. Receive illumination. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray every negative prophecy concerning your life is cancelled. Can Amen. Lord, we ask, oh God. For your healing, cancer will speak to you. Bow in the name of Jesus. Every siege, whatever battle, sicknesses and diseases, we pack and go in the name of Jesus. Amen. Whatever that battle that comes your way this year, I pray you will dominate. Amen. I pray for you today. That situation will turn around for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Showing every Thursdays at 6 p.m. West African time. You can't deceive God. Hmm. None of us can deceive God. Nobody can actually become a leader if God has not ordained it. Mm. What is the right knowledge? The right knowledge is scripture. Yes, sir. Because the Bible is light years ahead of science. But I usually will ask God. How do I explain this the thing spirit. in a way that people will understand? Hmm. The Spirit of God can anoint you to teach, can anoint you to preach, can anoint you for business, speech, can anoint you in politics. The scripture speaking, Psalm chapter 107 verse 20. He sent forth his word and healed them and delivered them from every of their destruction. We are trusting the Lord that as we discuss his word this day, God will deliver us from every form of ignorance, every form of destruction, and grant us grace to walk even in the path of wisdom. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Welcome back. For more on our top stories, please visit our website at acnntv.com or our social media platforms on facebook.com or youtube.com forward slash at ACNN television. To be up to date with our news and other programs, download the ACNN TV app 
Avo TV app, Net Ninja TV app, Limex World TV app, or Android TV app from Google Play Store or iOS Store. And you can also advertise your goods and services on ACNN TV. The Christian Association of Nigeria in Plato State has staged a peaceful protest over the continuous killings in Plato State and other parts of the country. The protest tagged Plato Peace Walk was led by the state camp chairman, Reverend Polycap Lubo, and other prominent Christian leaders in the state. Dressed in black attires, the Peace Walk started at the PRTVC roundabout in Jos, heading to the Rayfield Government House, where they were received by top government officials, including the state governor, Caleb Muftwang. Chairman of the Denominational Leaders Forum in Plato State and National Vice President of Khan, Reverend Stephen Baba Panya, in a protest letter handed over to the governor for onward delivery to President Bola Tinubu, said that Christians and people of Plato State were not happy over the continued attacks and killings in the state. Panya, who recalled how villages in their communities, including children, were brutally murdered in their homes during the Christmas Eve attacks, noted that for many years, Christians in Plato State had come under persistent attacks and killings without any decisive action taken to stop the killings. He called on the president to take drastic actions to deal with the situation, particularly calling on the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice as a matter of urgency to initiate the process of officially proscribing the armed terrorist militias responsible for the mindless killings. He urged for the release of all those alleged to have been arrested with legitimate self-defense implements such as cutlasses, clubs and machetes and in the course of protecting their communities in the aftermath of the attacks. Meanwhile, the Taraba State Chapter of the Christian Association of Nigeria, Khan, has declared a seven-day period of fasting and prayers across different denominations and churches in the state. The state Khan Chairman, Rev. Dr. Isaiah Magaji, said the spiritual exercises aimed at addressing the rising level of insecurity within the state. He said Taraba State in recent times has been struggling with security challenges, including kidnapping and armed banditry and other vices against the law. And now the body of Christ is raising their voice unto God for safety. Reverend Dr. Isaiah Magaji further called upon Christians to prioritize love and continuous prayer for one another, as he also sought prayers for the immediate release of persons who are still being held hostage by their abductors around the state and other places. A one-time governorship candidate in River State, Sabio Pomabo Awara, described civil servants as the most corrupt and worst set of people to deal with. Speaking on ACN and TV morning show Now Streaming, the political analyst said that if corruption in civil service is dealt with, 70% of the nation's problem will be solved. To know the intention of government. Okay before you even know whether the system is corrupt or not. Mm -hmm. Like, thirdly, you said uh, uh, that uh, it is that these people are being corrupted. The worst set of people to deal with are the civil servants. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's I was, loud. I was a governorship candidate in River State, so I know. Okay. I got to a point where I could actually, I was interacting with them, their suggestions. They were giving me a new that the system is if you tackle corruption in civil service mm. 70 percent of our problems will be solved mm. okay hmm. as i am now i've not been a minister if if they appoint me today a minister they, will, they want to teach you oh god that's what we do a year mm. <laughs> that's the word 
Against the backdrop of the recent controversy surrounding the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Dr. Betty Edu, in connection with the 585 million naira misappropriation of funds, a political strategist and analyst, Mr. Onye Umejiburu, during a CNN TV morning show, now streaming, gave his view on the hula baloo, calling for a proper cleanup and sanctioning of the ministry. Proper procedures should also be taken. It is this indiscipline that we are talking about mm. is because there is no preparation to be a minister for humanitarian affairs. Look, let me tell you, that ministry should be cleaned up and sanctioned. A lot has been happening in that ministry. I mean, or maybe genuine that they need cash, maybe. Nevertheless, there are procedures on how these things work. There is a rule that guides the expenditure of government. Such money mm. should go through a company, should be awarded or something, you know, a company that pays tax. Do you get what I'm saying? I think that's where she she made her own mistake. And of course, I, I will keep saying, uh, apparently, the lady is quite excited about the office. And um, excitement can cause a lot of harm. Mr. Oni Umejiburo, while commending the present administration for its prompt action on corruption issues, further called on President Ahmed Bola Tinubu as a matter of urgency to also swing into action towards taking necessary steps in addressing corruptions in other government parastatals that are of national concerns. One good thing about this government, they haven't done so much, but I'll give it up for them and I'll give it to them mm. that they at least make responses when issues are raised. When the young guy in FEMA was put, you know, the country yelled and wailed and the president removed him immediately. If um, the probe comes out to find her guilty and the president takes her off that office, I think it's a good thing. If she's privileged to get hold another office, she'll be more careful. She has to be more careful. And they should look, I'm saying that holistically, it's not just about her. Because if there is no money to spend, she won't be writing memo. Humanitarian, that Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, they have to look into it again. There is a lot of payments that go in there that are cash. And these things have little or no records. There's disbursement from the money that came from uh, Easy World Bank also. There's disbursement from Abacha Loot. A lot of all those things are inside humanitarian. So I think this government should actually look into that ministry. It, it was because the money is too much that maybe Madam Minister was moved to go and sign something that she's... This is it on News on the R. Before we go, a recap of the major stories.